So when I'm talking about Jagat Guru, in this speech, I mean original Jagat Guru. So Shankaracharya is one of five original Jagat Gurus in Kalyug. After him came Jagat Guru Nimbarkacharya. After him came Jagat Guru Ramanujacharya, number three. Number four was Jagat Guru Madhvacharya. And in 1957, the scholars of India made Shri Kripaluji Maharaj the fifth original Jagat Guru in the last 5,000 years. So it was an amazing event because it's such a rare occurrence and also because of the style in which it happened, which was a little different than how the other saints had become Jagat Gurus. Sri Maharaji was also very young when he became Jagat Guru. He was 34. Up until the age of 32, he had never given any public speech. He had been giving satsang since the age of 16, 17, 18, leading kirtan, encouraging people to meditate on Radha and Krishna and chant their name, answering questions, maybe starting to give some private talks to the devotees sitting in people's homes or that kind of thing, but no public discourses. When he was 32, Shri Kripaluji Maharaj decided to organize a big conference, Darshanik Sammelan, getting all the major scholars of India together at one place. He did that in Chitrakoot in Madhya Pradesh. There were 76 scholars invited. All the Jagat Gurus, Mandaleshwars, Maha Mandaleshwars, all the great scholars of India were invited. And they all met at this place where tens of thousands of people came and were listening every day. It was a 16-day conference. Now, since Sri Maharaj was the organizer, but he did not schedule himself to speak, he had organized this to try to create a forum where these great scholars of India could come together and reconcile some of the confusing points which uh, distract people from the spiritual path. So when he invited all these great scholars, he showed them these are the topics that you're invited to speak on. There are some things that people don't understand, like for instance, why do some richas of the Vedas talk about God being sakar, having a form, and others talk about him being nirakar, having, being formless? Why is it that there are so many different paths described in our scriptures? So out of all of those, which ones are correct or which one is correct? How are all those paths interrelated? Why are there so many different forms of God described in our scriptures? How are all those forms interrelated? The previous Jagat Gurus, the previous four Jagat Gurus, they all established their particular philosophy. And if you, when an ordinary person studies that, there appear to be great contradictions between the different Jagat Gurus' philosophies. Even if you look within our original Sanskrit scriptures, there appear to be contradictions from one scripture to another, or even within the same scripture. So he brought up many topics like this, which have confounded the scholars for centuries and confused the ordinary people who want to follow the path to God. So he invited all these greatest scholars of India together to speak on these topics. But no one was addressing those questions because no one had the answers. These are great scholars who concentrate on one particular area of study. None of them is a complete scholar of the whole body of Hindu scriptures. So to answer these questions that Sri Maharaj had brought up, it would require an overall knowledge of all the Hindu scriptures and the ability to reconcile all of these apparently contradictory views. None of them was willing to do it. They were all speaking on just whatever topic they wanted to talk on. And after nine days, the public started to get restless. 
And there were rumblings in the crowd like, hey, what's going on? No one's answering any of these questions. We came here to hear the answer to these questions. So all these scholars got together, they had a private meeting without Sri Maharaji and they decided that well, he's the one who came up with these impossible questions to answer and now everybody wants to hear them answered, let's challenge him to answer them. They're thinking, he's 32 years old, what chance does he have of answering these questions if we can't answer it? So. Sri Maharaji started speaking on that day from the time they challenged him for the whole rest of the conference three hours a day. So the first day when he started speaking everyone was amazed including his devotees because he had never given a public speech before and he was sitting up there quoting from dozens of different scriptures in perfect Sanskrit so everybody was amazed that where did this come from? And the scholars were amazed that uh, how could such a young person have so much knowledge? So Maharaji reconciled all of these problems by the end of this conference. So he started to become pretty well known. There were also some scholars of the Kashi Vidvat Parishat who were there at this time. They went back. Kashi Vidvat Parishad at that time was the most elite, most prominent body of scholars, like an organization of scholars. And naturally it was in Varanasi, which is the center and always has been the center of Sanskrit and scriptural learning in India. So they went back and told the other members of the Kashi Vidvat Parishad they were raving about Sri Maharaji, praising him so much. But those other members who weren't there, they were skeptical. So next year when Sri Maharaji organized another similar conference in Kanpur, they sent their general secretary, Raj Narayan Shat Shastriji Shukla. And he came unannounced to this uh, event because they wanted to surprise Sri Maharaji and his idea was I'll go and I'll ascertain for myself, I'll judge his ability as a scholar. So he went there and on the first day when Sri Maharaji saw him he said, oh I didn't know you were coming and please will you speak? Ma Sri Maharaji was scheduled to speak that night. So he said yes, yes but I'll speak after you because it's supposed to be, uh, you know, the more respected scholar is supposed to go last. So he said, I'll speak after you. Sri Maharaji said, sure, no problem. And he sat in the crowd in the front row right in front of Sri Maharaji with a notebook and a pen indicating that he was ready to write down any mistakes that Sri Maharaji made or anything that he said that he didn't agree with. So Sri Maharaji started speaking and Sri uh, Raj Narayan Shastriji, he his pen just stayed like that. It didn't move the whole time. And when it was his turn to speak after Sri Maharaj was finished speaking, he politely declined. He said, I won't speak today, I'll speak tomorrow. And he respect he requested to speak before Sri Maharaj. So then he went up the next day to speak, and Sri Maharaj sat in the front row with a notepad and a pen. <laughs> but Sri Maharaji's pen never moved either because his whole speech was about Sri Maharaji. If you want to see what he said that day, it's printed in Sri Maharaji's book Prem Ras Siddhant. The original Hindi is there in that and also the translated in the English version. He praised Sri Maharaji a lot. He said, we the scholars of Kashi are very hesitant to accept anyone as being knowledgeable in the scriptures. First we test them, we debate against them, we question them, we test their knowledge in every way. But he says, today I surrender to the divine character and knowledge of Sri Kripaluji Maharaj. And this was an elderly scholar, but one of the preeminent scholars of India at that time. 
imagine who is saying I'm bowing down before this 33 year old Shri Kripaluji Maharaj he was that affected by Sri Maharaji by his not only his speech and his knowledge but his personality the divinity of his personality and he urged the crowd he said I recognize the divinity of Shri Kripaluji Maharaj and I also urge you to do the same and follow his teachings put them practically into your life and gain the benefit from it so I encourage you to actually go and read that you can uh, check it out afterwards It's quite amazing so anyway he went back and was also praising Sri Maharaji to Kashi Vidwat Parishad again and those who hadn't heard him speak yet they were still very skeptical so they decided there's only one way to settle this we have to invite him here to Kashi to speak before us and then we can all test him we'll debate against him so they invited Sri Maharaji to come in early January 1957 so Sri Maharaji went and he gave more than a week long series of speeches all in Sanskrit not in Hindi, in Sanskrit. He spoke that whole nine days in Sanskrit. The first day he started out using very simple Sanskrit. Like what you see in Gita. That kind of easy Sanskrit. So, of course the hall was packed with uh, several hundred scholars, almost 600 scholars. Plus the general public. So they were thinking as he began, oh, he's speaking Sanskrit very, very well, very perfectly, but it's such an easy Sanskrit. So as Sri Maharaji kept speaking for several hours, he gradually increased the difficulty of his Sanskrit until at the end, for the last part of his speech, much of it was going over the head of many of the scholars sitting there. The Sanskrit he was using was so high that many of them couldn't even understand. So he gained their respect from day one and he sat there after the speech because traditionally that's a time for debate. If someone wants to challenge anything he, he said, then they can do Shastrarth. Nobody took up the challenge. They all sat there quietly. Keep in mind, these are scholars in their 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s who spent their whole life studying specific topics. These are the experts in all these specific areas, like getting all the sci leading scientists together. Nobody is an expert in all the areas. Everybody has their specific area. And each of those specific experts felt like Sri Maharaji knew more than him in his area. <laughs> this went on for the whole nine days and at the end they had a meeting without Sri Maharaji. All of these scholars had a meeting and they said, is anyone among you willing to debate against him on any topic? No, nobody was. So they said, then we have no choice. We have to accept him as Jagat Guru and we have to ask him to accept this title. So they did. And that's how Sri Maharaji became the fifth Jagat Guru. But this was unprecedented. No Jagat Guru had ever challenged all the scholars at one place, in, in one place at one time. Shankaracharya, Jagat Guru Shankaracharya had gone around debating one on two against various scholars. Here they were all in one place. And none of them felt that he was qualified to debate anything against Shri Kripaluji Maharaj, who from that day forth was known as Jagat Guru Shri Kripaluji Maharaj. They also called him actually Jagat Guru Uttam, Jagat Guru Uttam. It means the Supreme Jagat Guru for two reasons. One, to differentiate between the other people holding the title of Jagat Guru currently in the world who are not original Jagat Gurus. And number two, because the four previous Jagat Gurus all introduced their philosophy from their point of view. Whereas when Sri Maharaji explained his philosophy, he did it while proving the correctness of the previous four Jagat Guru's philosophies. 
So he gave them full respect, proved how their philosophy was correct, even though it seemed, they seemed to contradict each other. He showed how they're not contradicting. You have to understand from what perspective they're explaining. He also showed how all the apparent contradictions within our scriptures can be understood if you have the right perspective. I can't go into detail tonight. <laughs> like I said, it took him nine days of speaking for three hours every day to explain all of this to scholars. So because of that, they also called him Jagat Guru Tam, indicating that he's the Jagat Guru of all the Jagat Gurus. So it was an unprecedented event in the history of Kashi. That happened on this day, January 14th, 1957. They gave him a big long title actually, Shri Mat Padavakya Pramana Paravarina Vedamarka Pratishthapanacharya Nikhila Darshan Samanvayacharya Sanatana Vaidik Dharma Pratishthapana Paramacharya Bhakti Yoga Rasavatar Bhagavadananta Shri Vibhushit Jagat Guru Shri Ek Hazar Art Swami Kripaluji Maharaj. That's his full title that they gave to all those scholars. <laughs> they, they wrote this out, putting a lot of thought into it. Each of those names that they gave him has a meaning, like Nikhila Darshan Samanvayacharya, the one who reconciled all the scriptural. Uh, views and all the views of all the previous saints into one easily understandable philosophy. Bhakti Yogra Savatar, the divine dissension of bhakti and ras. So indicating what kind of d divine personality Sri Maharajji is. Because they not only witnessed the greatness of his knowledge, they were also influenced by the you can say the, the bliss of his personality, his blissful personality. He, he didn't just have dry knowledge. He himself was representing that divine bliss on the earth planet. So they called him Bhakti Yoga Ras Avatar. I don't have time to go into the detail in the rest of this, but this in gist is what happened on that day, Makar Sankranti Day of 1957. So we also celebrate today as Jagat Guru Divas. Sri Kripaluji Maharaj ended his earthly leelas a couple of months ago, November 15th, I believe it was, just this at the end of 2013. But his teachings are still available in full in the world. So the same benefit that could be had when he was physically here on the earth planet can still be had due to modern technology for one thing and also due to his divine grace. So we have thousands of his speeches available on video and audio recordings. We have his books which he revealed his chantings, which are there to be used to help souls who want to remember Radha and Krishna, that they can chant these kirtan. We have recordings of him chanting kirtan in his divine voice. So anyone who wants to benefit from the personality of Jagat Guru Shri Kripaluji Maharaj still can, even if they never met him in person, you can still follow his teachings and get the benefit, just like Sri Raj Narayan Shat Shastri had indicated back in 1956 at the Kanpur convention, when he told the crowd, please, I'm urging you, recognize what you have here, follow his teachings, see what benefit you get in his life. So we still have that opportunity now in 2014. We can learn from his books, we can learn from his speeches directly. You don't have to hear it from me. You can listen to his speeches directly and learn from him. And learn about the path of bhakti, the path of selfless devotion to God, how it can improve your life and how it can result in actually attaining God in this life. While, and you have to learn how to do that while living your life in this world, which he's revealed all of those secrets how to do, how to accomplish all of this without having to leave and go to the jungles, but 
it's doable even while living here in New York City. So that's all the time I have to explain to you tonight. Boliye Jagat Guru Shri Kripaluji Maharaj Ki Jai.